So if Ben was to get this message and then and, and other people like him. Two times in the last three years, he went to rehab. It's beautiful about it. And then I'm not a, you know, I struggle with my faith. I struggle uh, with, with belief, but I do, I do see. What's unique about Islam from other man-made religions? How would you uh, explain it to Ben in, in, in a minute? With conspiracy theories that may or may not be true, maybe some of those conspiracy theories are actually true, but what are you gonna do about it? Is it synthetic? Is it man-made? Is it this? I'm concerned about a world where pharmaceutical companies can manufacture diseases for which they are the only ones who have manufactured a cure. You know, we hear a lot of people getting sick because of the the immune system being compromised, genetically modified yep. foods and the environment and uh, uh, bad oh. food, bad water and all these things. So th that's it. Let's look at this coronavirus situation, this lockdown. Let's look at it like that. Yeah, for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable. This is the danger. How are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. How's everything been? Nice um, blurred background there, bro. Mashallah yeah. going on. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> how, how you been? How's everything over there in uh, London, UK? Uh, well, I'm not in London, first of all. I live in the countryside, far away from London. So yeah. my life is hardly different at all, to be honest. It's just a lot quieter. Uh, but where I live is really quiet anyway, to be honest. So, yeah. um, you know, me, you know, life's pretty much the same, to be honest. We, we missed you there on a great trip. We saw Hamza Zorsis was there. Okay. Uh, and some of the rest of the crew of, uh, of this organization. You know, this guy, these guys, they were in, Bo yeah. they, they were in Bosnia. I still know them. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, did they tell you about the trip in Bosnia? Yeah, a little bit, bro. Uh, alhamdulillah. I mean, I was watching you guys on, um, you know, I, I think I was, I don't know if it was Instagram or, or whatever it was, something. I was watching the stories and you were there with Sheikh Haytham, I saw that. He was there also, you yeah. There. yeah we... And some of the brothers. So, I mean, I was pretty much, you know, keeping pace with it, to be honest, through social media. So, um, yeah, Alhamdulillah, it seemed really good. Yeah, they've been, they've gone back there a couple of times as well. So, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're really trying to figure out uh how to get things going there in um in bosnia because i know the situation is a little bit complex and a little bit difficult um but you know they're trying to do some stuff trying to do some work inshallah yeah so how is the situation now as far as uh in your area so you're not in the big city by london but you're you're in the... well, we're in lockdown so i mean it's like you're in lockdown all... there also we've all got the same rules to follow um, actually, my area has quite an aged population, so I think people are, you know, particularly being careful here. So you're only allowed to go in the supermarkets, you know, everyone has to keep, you know, like uh, six feet apart. They only let people in in the supermarkets in very limited numbers. But things have calmed down. The panic buying seems to have stopped, you know, the shops are stocked up. It's just very quiet, you know. Uh, we can't really go anywhere. We can't drive anywhere. So, you know, from that perspective, you know, I, you, people can still go to work if they have to. Uh, the government hasn't actually, I don't know, like work can still happen, but basically shops are all closed. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, a lot of, I mean, I era, we've closed our offices anyway, and everyone's working from home. Yeah. So what are your overall thoughts? I mean, to this global pen that's happening what goes to your mind what do you what do you guys what are you thinking analyzing everything i don't know roy i think it's a, it's um i think it's it's a big wake-up call from allah you know i think what really it is is to make everybody realize that i think there's a few really i mean for me i always try to look for the positive things i don't I try because the prophet said, you know, like the, how wonderful is the situation of the believer? Everything that happens to them is good, you know. So for us Muslims, everything is good. Um, if some barakah comes to us, some blessing, you know, we're thankful and that's good for us. And if some test or trial comes, you know, we're patient and that's good for us. So um, I always look for the good in things. I don't, I, you know, there's there's a nice saying: the obstacle is the way. So when something like this happens, I'm always trying to look for, okay, what's the positives? And there are actually so many positives. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the, I'm very, very 
uh, a person who, and for a long time in my life, but especially more now, I'm very, very uh, aware about the environment, the damage human beings are doing to our planet. Um, and it's all a byproduct of a, uh, you know, an insane consumer society that is just literally destroying our planet. This whole idea of materialism, consume, buy this, buy that, have this, have that. You know, the same stuff I've been talking about for years and my old sex, drugs and rock and roll talks. Um, so I think it's one of the positive things is that people are flying less, people are driving less. It's like the atmosphere is clearing up, pollution is clearing up. Um, and hopefully it's making human beings realize that, you know, the people who are really important are things like doctors and nurses and people who, you know, check out your shopping and people who deliver food and people who grow food, right? I mean, you start to realize what's really, really important in life, you know? Um, and they're not like hedge fund managers and billionaires. And these people are not really the ones who keep our world going, not at least on the everyday level, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, these are just some of the things, you know, um, I, 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 there are things that worry me. I won't lie. You know, I worry about, um, I'm very, very concerned about the infringement on civil liberties, literally what yesterday or the day before yesterday, the British government passed a very, very, very draconian, far reaching bill that literally gives them dictatorial powers. I mean, they li literally could do it. They, they could literally do what China does, <laughs> you know? Um, so some of that is really scary. It's scary from the point of view if, if there are people who do have an agenda um, other than just the concern of the nation's health, um, they could drive some really scary stuff forward. But, you know, um, you just you just realize that, bro, this is, Eddie, this is like what so many people on the planet are living through this anyway. You know, that for them, that's the, their everyday life. It doesn't make it mean that we should, you know, I think in, in the States, you, you know, you know, you have a constitution, things are a lot harder to mess around with. But still, you know, even in the States, it's been going on since 9-11, you know, you've had a really massive erosion of civil liberties and basic rights that, you know, people have taken for granted for decades well, and decades. Did you see some of that small clear up? They showed pictures before. Yeah, you, you've seen that. So, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, I saw that in China. Massive smog clear up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in Venice, the canals clearing up. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's no boats churning up all the water. It's just you know, like things like dolphins, like people have never seen them before. People hearing birds mm -hmm. singing in cities. People say, "Well, we never heard the birds before." It's like simple things like that. That um. You know, those are very, very good things. So, uh, and, you know, spiritually as well, I think it's really good, you know, because the things we, we forget that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, bro, he, you know, how he, he actually told us to stay in our homes. Like, you know, this is one of the things, Islam, you know, don't sit in the streets, beware of sitting in the streets. You know, this, and, and this is not just in times of fitna, right? Um, it's a good thing in Islam just to, you know, stay in your home. Uh, you know, keep to yourself, to yourself. Um, and then let alone, like you putting up there, the hadith, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's amazing what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying, bro, 1,400 years ago. So like, yeah, you put this hadith, if you hear of an outbreak of plague in a land, do not enter it. But if the plague breaks out in a place where you are in it, do not leave that place. So how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1,400 years ago was teaching us about quarantine. I mean, one of the hadith, which I don't, I don't, I, I've forgotten this hadith, you know, like unless a hadith sometimes actually impacts on your life, mm -hmm. you may read it, but it, it just, you know, it doesn't register. So the hadith that people are mentioning about the person who stays at home at the time of plague, they get the reward of a martyr. I mean, subhanAllah, bro. I mean, we're not talking about people who die of the plague. We're talking about people who stay at home. They are patient. They put their trust in Allah. They know that whatever Allah has decreed for them is going to happen. And, you know, they're in that state 
they get the reward of subhanallah a martyr so um this is a this is a good thing this yeah. is a very very good thing what about um, um yeah now what comes to your mind when you when you uh, read this? Uh, so so we covered the first hadith where it's amazing. Fourteen hundred years ago, you had the last and final messenger sent to mankind, Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. He mentioned that the quarantine. Yep. Right. And then now this is really because uh, we started off with uh, all the affairs of the believer are good. You know, yeah. uh, you quoted that uh, authentic uh, prophetic. Uh, statement and now yeah. this is another one of I think optimism what do you think when you hear this that there is no disease except that uh, the creator God Almighty Allah has sent uh, a cure and absolutely and it's hadith like this that actually put Muslim civilization at the forefront of developing science and medicine um, and you know all sorts of things that were beneficial for humanity because they were motivated by these things by looking for a cure for diseases um so this is again um this this is a very hopeful statement and it's something that really encourages us and and makes us understand that also it really makes us understand a little bit about the purpose of life right people you know i remember one famous atheist he's a celebrity going on tv once and ranting about oh there's this illness and if there's a god you know how does god let people die of this illness and, you know, there he was, and he's actually a very, very intelligent guy. Um, and as he was saying that, I was thinking, well, if you care so much, why didn't you dedicate your life to finding a cure for it instead of doing, you know, a pretty much pointless thing like being a comedian? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reality is the cure is out there. And life is a test, you see. What are we going to do with the intelligence that Allah has given I'd us? Like what, what are we going to do with the, the brain that Allah has given us, our intelligence, all our... Mm -hmm faculties, all our materialistic. One of the things that, you know, I saw Lauren Booth posted it and I reposted it on my Instagram was, you know, like, why are we spending all this money on arms and weapons? You know, this is one of the things. Now we have the, I don't know, the new head of the UN saying, look, this is a real sign for everybody. Why are we, why are we fighting each other? Why are we killing each other? Mm -hmm. You know, this disease, you know, this pandemic, I think it's really the first of its kind. I, sw I suppose the, pan the Spanish flu had a similar effect in the sense that it was worldwide. The Black Death was, I think as far as I know, the Black Death was more concentrated in Europe. Uh, but this is the first time something has gone like quite so global. Yeah. And it does make us realize that we are just one people. We, we breathe the same air, right? We, the oceans, all our oceans are connected. We are all connected. You know, this whole idea of nation states that we can divide ourselves up into these nations and draw borders and, you know, it's so outdated. You know, it's it's really time we come back to the Islamic understanding that we are all Beni Adam. We're all descended from one man and one woman. We are all family. We are all cousins. We're all brothers and sisters. We are all connected to each other. You know, not just physically, but, you know, um, in our genetics and, and even ultimately spiritually. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned uh, a key word now, especially during these time of the coronavirus now, the global uh, pandemic. You mentioned something real important. And this can be a, a means of people really reflecting on those key words you said, purpose of life. I want to get your mm -hmm. reaction to this. Uh, excuse uh, some of the... Uh, the uh, instruments here, this is how the video came, but I want to get your uh, reaction to, to this. Uh, it goes back to what we're talking about, purpose, and some of these very important questions in life. And this is from, uh, I don't know if you recognize this individual here. Some actor. Yeah, Ben Affleck. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Are you ready? There you go. Yeah. It's to find some sort of sense of meaning and purpose, you know. Uh, I was not raised religious. I don't, I'm not a, a very good uh, Christian, although I go to church uh, with my kids uh, because it was important to Jennifer and, and now I go too and I like it quite a bit. I get depressed, I take antidepressants. They're very helpful for me. I've, I've taken them since I was 26 years old, various different kinds and I've switched and tried this and tried that. Sometimes they won't tell you about some awful side effect. Two times in the last That's three years he went to rehab. 
always worried that his drinking was affecting the children at the center of his life. I really don't want my children to pay for my sins. Looking back at our 25 years doing interviews, what have you learned about yourself and women? And what? Women. <clears throat> yeah, I go to Methodist church and my kids are baptized and uh, I got introduced to uh, Christianity a little bit later in life. Um, one of the things that I found most beautiful about it, and, and I'm not a, you know, I struggle with my faith, I struggle uh, uh, with, with belief, but I do, I do see there's something enormously beautiful and elegant about the notion uh, that we are all sinners and that it's that you know it's our job to 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 find our redemption to find god's love to redeem ourselves to live the best life that we can live to love one another to not judge one another to forgive one another i think those are extremely powerful ideas and very very relevant probably more relevant today than ever um, because there's a little bit more of an attitude of like find something somebody did wrong once and you know right. kind of get rid of them um, and that to me feels uh unnecessarily uh, judgmental. You know, it's that, that he was not sin cast the first stone, I think is a, a very wise proverb. I, I want to start off with what he first, he, uh, he mentioned, because that goes in line with what you were saying, you know, the purpose of life. He said he wants meaning, uh, purpose in life, uh, mm -hmm. that he wasn't raised a religious person, uh, and really not a good Christian. Uh, what goes to your mind when you hear this? Well, you know, like it, it's something I've been saying for years. And I think that deep down inside, why the reason why I believe people are depressed, one of the most, one of the major reasons why people are depressed is exactly this. They don't know the purpose of life. And the real problem with Christianity, for someone like who's clearly very intelligent, like Ben Affleck, he comes across as being someone who is obviously quite a smart guy and you know it's interesting i'd love to hear why in detail he struggles with faith um a lot of the time people struggle with it because it makes it makes sense to them on an emotional level at some level it makes emotional sense but it doesn't make intellectual sense you know anyone any intelligent person is going to struggle with the concept of the trinity the, the idea of god becoming a man and dying on the cross right even the whole christian story of salvation you know the idea that god kills an innocent person for everybody else's sins you know like anyone who sits there thinking about it just for a bit is going to start thinking this is just mad right yet on the other hand like he says jesus says you know some really beautiful stuff like really amazing stuff like you read the beatitudes for example you know blessed are the meek you know for they shall inherit i always think about that especially in these days you know blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth you know uh, blessed are the peace peacemakers and you know they'll be called sons of god and blessed are the ones who seek justice you know and so on and so forth beautiful the actual teachings of jesus are really beautiful it's the theology around him that is just doesn't make any sense, right? And uh, people don't realize that, you know, Christianity is not the religion of Jesus. It's a religion about Jesus. So I can see why, you know, on one hand, he's very attracted to it. On another hand, he's from an intellectual level, he's probably really, really confused. Um, and it's not, I suppose, it's not going to help him. Some people, I guess what they can do is they can just put that aside. They'll just they'll come up with a sort of rationalization. Religion doesn't need to make sense. I don't need to understand why I believe in God or not. They just, you know, they put it, which is fine to us to an extent, right? But ultimately the problem is, is that in order to really feel you know the purpose of life, the explanation for the purpose of life has to make sense. It has to make sense intellectually and it has to make sense deep down spiritually within yourself and if it doesn't you're always going to be you're always going to be lost you're still going to be lost right um that's often what i say to christians i don't i you know when, when i when i when i speak to christians i never deny them their experiences right because for them many of them religion has changed their life and i don't say oh that's a lie i say yeah maybe it did because you found you found something of the truth 
But, you know, now you're talking to me and maybe some bigger truth has come to you, some deeper truth has come to you, right? You have to constantly assess that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I feel for those guys. I, I think the problem is, as you know, appreciate Eddie, you know, very well, right? Um, even if people know, even if people knew that Islam was the truth, right? Even if we could get through to Ben Affleck and all people like that and have a conversation where they, the problem is, you know, you and you know this very well as a as a guy very much involved in Dawa since I've known you, the Eddie the Dean show has always been about reaching out to non-Muslims, letting them know what the true message of Islam. You know, may Allah bless you, Rob, you, the astounding work you've been doing. You know how challenging it is. You know how many barriers, how many misconceptions that you're always trying to break down and say, listen, guys, you know, give us a chance. You know, don't come here with all your, you know, pre-programmed ideas of, uh, of what you think Islam and Muslims are about. We're not about that. That's what you're always saying, right? You're always saying that. But the, the crazy thing is that even if we could get beyond that and we could then get to explain, even if they say, okay, that makes sense, then they, they've got another challenge. And another challenge is, is that Islam and Muslims are demonized. You have to have a lot of courage to be a Muslim these days, to, to just be a Muslim, even if you're born into a Muslim family, it takes courage. To convert to Islam, it takes maybe even more courage. Right, it's a very big courageous step, but people need it so badly, you know, so desperately the world needs it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I you know, I, I wish the best for you know for that guy. I, I can so relate to what he's saying, actually. You know, because I'm sure you and me, you know, went through a very very similar like experience. Like you know, it sounds so similar to the sort of, you know, the sort of. The, the same well I you know the existential angst they call it you know that that big questions that I was asking myself you know alhamdulillah guided me you know I was young and I had that strength and you know he, I don't know how old Ben Affleck is now I must be getting on a bit right <laughs> yeah. for, for people that don't know because you came from a Christian background you went through that struggle with your family there's people can watch yeah. that story it's all over we've interviewed you before regarding your story oh. Uh, if they want to see that. Uh, do you think there's also, um, a, so you think there's a direct correlation with him kind of going through life, not knowing the purpose, and then uh, the yeah. antidepressants, the drugs, uh, the also the drinking. He talks yeah, about he, cool. ta he talks about how he would just want to drink on occasion, just like everybody does, but then it, it doesn't happen like that. You know, he just, you get just deeper and deeper in, in, into it. Uh, but Islam, do you think because in Christianity, yeah, you have verses that clearly talk about, you know, uh, wine being a mocker, you shouldn't drink, you know, you even have uh, many pastors who have come out, but then there's also a debate, like, oh, this is the old law, this is that and the other, so, but do you think Ben Askram, if he had these clear guidelines, like Islam is clear on it, it's forbidden, there's no doubt about it, where, where it's not up in the air, do you think Ben Askram... Uh, needs Islam, but, needs that, that complete submission to yeah. his, his creator, that he has that purpose, is lined out, where many people, you know, in Christianity, other ways, it's just kind of, uh, you know, make up the rules as you go, change the goalpost here and there to suit think, your desires. I think one of the things, Eddie, that you, when and you've talked to so many converts to Islam, alhamdulillah, one of the things you will find consistently that converts mention about one of the things that it, they love about being a Muslim is that, you know, you have very clear boundaries, yeah. right? Yeah. What you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, like 99% of the time, it's not confusing. You don't need to, oh, should I, you know, have a little sip of wine in this social setting? You know, like, okay, some people, they go to Alcoholics Anonymous and, you know, they make it clear to them. They give them that, you know, they give them that clear thing like you're not allowed to drink. That's it. You just can't drink. No drink. Day by day. You take it day by day. Not a sip, not a bit. No, nothing. Right. Um but a lot of people, and it's not just with drink, it's with a whole lot of other things. Yeah. Right? How do you interact with women? You know, so some people have a problem with women, right? Um, you know, they can't restrain themselves, right? Well, you know, Islam gives simple rules. You don't shake hands, you don't touch, you don't kiss, you don't, you don't have physical contact because that's, the where, that's where it starts. 
And so it's whole. It's so interesting with this Harvey Wein, this Weinstein, uh, whatever his name was, right? And the whole Me Too campaign. And like, how how simple would it be if people had the Islamic rules, right? If someone is not your wife or your mother or your sister, or you know, like you don't have physical contact with them, you don't sit alone in a room with them. It's simple, right? The rules are very very simple. Just follow the rules. The same with drinking. Not only don't you drink it, you don't touch it, you don't carry it, you don't sell it, you don't you don't sit in the same table where people are drinking it, right? That's how much you need to be away from alcohol, right? So it gives these very, very clear rules that not only tells you don't do the sin, but just keep away from even the things that are going to lead you to that sin, right? Um, and it's all for the benefit of human beings. Allah doesn't need us to you know, not drink or not whatever, right? Allah doesn't need us to pray. It's not like God gets stronger because we pray to him, right? No, this guidance is there to help us and to make our lives better, right? I mean, that's not to say that there aren't Muslims who drink, you know, of course there are, you know, there are Muslims who drink and take drugs and, you know, whatever. But the thing is, the difference is that all of those people still know what the guidelines are. You yes, understand? Yes, yeah, right? yeah. They know it. They know it's wrong, Right. But the real confusion is in life is when you don't even know That's is this really wrong. Yeah, Why? You don't know okay, that, what's yeah. wrong with a glass of wine? Oh, so many doctors say that it's actually healthy for you, right? A glass of wine a day and that type of stuff, right? And no, in Islam it says it doesn't matter. Even if there's good in it, even if there is so, even though Allah says there is good in it, but the the evil is so much more than the good, you have to give it up altogether. Yeah. Right. This is the principle. Right. A little bit of good in something does not mean right that you are allowed that thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's the same the other way around. Right. It doesn't just mean because there's a little bit of bad in something that you just give it up altogether. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, at the end of the day, that's a beautiful thing. Islam gives you those clear, clear guidelines. Yeah. Right. It's the same with everything. How many times should I pray to God a day or a week or a whatever? Right? Like, yeah, if you think about it, maybe you would spend your whole life praying because God is definitely deserving of it. But you know, no, Allah tells us pray five times a day. That's the minimum that you have to do. You know, you take that space out five times in a day. It's just a few minutes, five times a day, and you reconnect with your creator. You know, yes. the rules are clear, right? So with fasting, so with giving charity, there's a minimum amount of stuff. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One other thing he said in his uh, interview, he talked about one of the most beautiful things, uh, along with his, his struggle with faith uh, that he's still going through, is this, this belief and notion that we're all sinners. And then it just reminds me, you know, of the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who, who has many statements talking about that. Uh, yeah. We're all sinners, and the best of sinners are those who turn yeah. back to their Creator, not through a Absolutely. not through a blood sacrifice, which many people yeah, you, you yeah. also struggled with. Uh, you talk about that in your story, uh, but just yeah. connecting with the one God, the Creator of the heavens and earth, Allah, directly without any intermediary, and seeking yeah. forgiveness. Absolutely, Eddie. You know, you hit the nail on the head, bro. And, uh, you know, it, it also reminds you that, you know, the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is saying, the son of Adam sins by night and by day, right? That's everybody. Everybody is going to fall short. The problem here is that Christianity, you know, so we agree, actually, we agree that, you know, everyone's going to fall short. Everyone's going to commit sins, right? Um, the problem is Christianity comes with a very convoluted path to allow you to connect with God, right? Through believing that somehow God has to kill himself and commit suicide or kill his son, you know, even worse. I don't know which is worse of the two or makes less sense, right? Uh, you know, in order for people to, for their sins to be forgiven and to be re reconnected with God. But in Islam, you just have to repent. Like the beautiful thing is you just recognize that, yes, I am a needy, weak human being, I, I, I fell short, I committed a sin, God forgive me, right? And you say it sincerely, you know, you know you've done wrong, you ask God to forgive you. I think the thing that, you know, the beautiful, and, and Allah will forgive you, 
I mean, not only does Allah forgive you, He gives you good deeds nearly as great as the sins you committed to replace it. That is how Allah loves repentance. You know, so that there's that beautiful story, you know, of the, uh, you know, the story of the prodigal son, right? Mm -hmm. The prodigal son. This is a biblical story. The story of Jesus talks about the prodigal son. You know, this son that goes off and he just he's a bad boy, right? And you know, and he comes home. And when he comes home, his father is so, so happy. You know, he slaughters a lamb for him, feeds him the best thing. You know, because why? Because he's, this, is the, this, is the, this is the example of repentance. This is the example of Tawbah. How much Allah loves a person to come back, you know, especially from being in that bad situation. But the other thing that Ben Affleck, you know, um, I think the other point that is really key that he makes, right? is when you realize there's two things, two points actually. When you realize that number one, everyone's a sinner, right? You know, you realize that, okay, I'm bad, but everyone does bad, right? Because, you know, as human beings, it's very important for us to realize that, you know, I'm not just the only one, right? So, you know, when, when people go through a bad situation in life, and, you know, people, I'm sure people ask you for advice all the time, Eddie, they ask me for advice all the time. And often people are telling me their story and I say, listen, believe me, you're not the only one who's gone, gone through this, right? So many people, this is, I wouldn't say it's normal, but like lots of people go through this and it's like, really? And it's like, yeah, really? And it's like, wow, I thought I was the only one. So this idea of thinking oh, I'm just the only one is sort of like makes you think you're a whole lot worse than you are, right? So when you realize that, yeah, you know, and by the way, it's very interesting because it's damaging psychologically. Beating yourself up, right, for what you've done doesn't help you. It actually ends most of the time, it makes you worse, right? That's the difference, right? It doesn't mean you don't acknowledge I'm wrong and you try and change, but that's the path you wanna take. Yeah, what I did was wrong, but I'm human. I've got weaknesses. I sin like everybody sins, but you, you're gonna try and change yourself and make yourself better, right? It's actually easier to do it from that perspective of realizing that, yeah, we all commit sins. I'm just a human. And the other thing is, I think the other thing he mentioned was so nice, is just not being judgmental about people, right? When you realize that everyone's a sinner and you're a sinner, right? You were a sinner, I'm a sinner, and you're a sinner. Then you realize that who are you to judge anybody else, right? You know, people sometimes say, oh, you know, this guy, there's this guy, this Muslim, you know, he's got a big beard and he prays and goes to the mosque and yet he does these bad things, uh, you know, and, and your religion tells, tells you, this may be even a Muslim saying this, right? Your religion tells you that prayer is supposed to keep you away from fahisha al munka, which means like fahisha is like open, yeah. like, well, you know, Immorality. like committing, yeah, sins, sins and evil, right? So I say, well, okay, but it's it does, because imagine how bad that person would be if he didn't pray, right? You know? And the thing is, you know, don't we, ha Eddie, don't we have enough human beings, us, don't we have enough of our own sins to worry about rather than spending our time looking at everybody else and judging everybody else? So that was a really nice thing that he said is that he was reminding us about don't judge on others, don't look down on others because honestly, if you just look in yourself, you're gonna find enough to occupy your time with by looking at your own sins instead of looking at other people's sins. So. I think, you know, a few of the things he said were quite deep reflections. Um, and as you know, like, there's so much similarity, obviously, uh, between what he's saying and what Islam believes, alhamdulillah. Uh, when we look at Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green, when we look at God's love, I mean, can you yeah. translate your name? Well, Abdul Rahim, you know, means the, 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 well, Abdul is like the slave or the servant or the worshiper right really abd comes from servitude or being in a state of submission and you know which is really worship of god right and uh, al rahim is one of the names of god it's it's one of the most frequently mentioned names of god al rahman which is the most merciful and al rahim is the specifically merciful right so rahim is a type of you know, so there's the general mercy of God, the Rahma, which is Ar Rahim, which is one of the names of God. This is a mercy that is for every creature, everybody, everything.
But there's a special type of mercy that Allah has, Rahim. That is a special extra type of mercy that is for, you know, mostly really the, the Rahim is for the believers. It's for the, you know, the, the true pious servants of Allah, yeah. right? Um, this is what some scholars explain the difference between Ar-Rahman, which is the the general mercy of God that's for everyone and everything, and Ar-Rahim, which is a very specific type of mercy, you know, that is, you know, for the believers. So, um, but God is the most merciful. You know, this, these are the names of God. And he is Al-Wadud, he is the loving. And he is Al-Ghafar, he is the forgiving, you know. Mm -hmm. And many, many other beautiful names that Allah has to remind of us his forgiveness, his mercy, his kindness, his beneficence to all humanity. So and every creature, actually. Mm -hmm. So if Ben was to get this message and then and, and other people like him to really hear these qualities that are all there in Islam and then some of the things that they've been confused about, the Trinity, you know, the yeah. blood sacrifice of Jesus, and here now just defining the Creator, God Almighty Allah's name of the most loving, the most merciful, that they can go directly to the Creator, beg yeah. for His mercy, and He will forgive them. Is that yeah. how it works? Absolutely. You know, like for someone, like he's a smart guy, right? But for anybody, I would just, you know, most people, they never think, you know, they may search through every religion, every philosophy. They'll look everywhere, but for some reason, they'll never look at Islam, even though it's one of the biggest and greatest religions on the earth. People, people will, uh, you know, they won't. So my advice to him and anyone is pick up the Quran. Right, uh, pick up a translation of the Quran and read it, you know, and ask God for guidance to show you. That's all that we can say, you know. Pick up the Quran, read it, and think about it. You know, this is what I recommend everybody do pick up the Quran, a translation of the Quran. And you know, there's a nice new, I can't remember what it's called, Ed, there's, a, there's a nice new one that's been done, uh, a new translation that is like easy to read. Clear, you know, uh, clear Quran, Sahih International. And yeah, the Clear Quran. Yeah. So you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, you can find a, something like the Clear Quran, which is, you know, translated into a more accessible language, right? Um, read it and see, and, and I, I think you people will find. I'm sure. I don't think. I'm sure that they'll find the answers to the questions they have. They'll find that. They'll find what they're looking for. As long as they approach it with sincerity and an open heart, they'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the end of his uh, interview, he mentioned a story of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love is one of the, the greatest messengers that God Almighty Allah ever sent, who came with the same message as all the other messengers. Worship the Creator, not the creation. Be morally upright. Do good deeds. And that's how you can get paradise, God's mercy. He said, yeah. cast the first stone. And it had me thinking because I just interviewed a yeah. former Christian uh, minister of 40 years, Richard, and he was also a Christian uh, professor. And this was one of the things that when, when f for all these years, he thought that he mentions, I believe, this story not being in the uh, one of those that were not authentic, that was thrown yeah, out. that's right, yeah. This story. And then along with the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, those books, just because they had the name of the authors, but they really were anonymous books. So yeah, it, it, yeah. Just, it just had, you know, because most people, 99% of the, the people out there. <laughs> so what do you think now? This, do you also, that when, you, when you went through this, the authenticity of the Quran uh -huh. versus, you know, other, other uh, books and scriptures? Yeah, I mean, you know, th I think it's really, really, I mean, that's one of the outstanding things about the Quran is the way that the Quran has been preserved. And that's always a question that anyone who starts to delve deeper and look into this issue deeper comes across this problem, right? Like, you, it's very hard to really feel genuinely convinced. I don't know, unless, look, people, there are always people who want to convince themselves and make themselves believe what they want to believe, right? Which is fine to a certain extent, right? You can't be totally skeptical about everything. You have to have some level of trust, right? But I think that honestly, when you look at the Bible, when you look at the Gospels, uh, and especially the Gospels, they're really, really problematic. There's no real scientific um, way that we can say the, this is what Jesus really said. Um, 
that there's no even there's no really reliable process like even if they found ancient documents the problem is they're just some gospels out of so many other gospels and short of saying well we just believe that god made sure that those are the ones that are preserved because they were the best ones which i sort of get that i can get that as a sort of um you know i, I can get it as a faith-based argument that well god must have preserved his word because it's god's word so what we've got must be like the thing but that but that's just a belief right there's no way to support that historically or scientifically there's no way to really assess from an independent objective point of view that Matthew Mark Luke and John is actually what Jesus really really said there's just no way to do that um so yeah you can take it from a point of view of faith but i mean that's that's what goes back to what i was saying about ben affleck for people who are very intelligent who have a rational approach in a society we've been taught to question things we we want to make sure things and it's good we want to make sure things are authentic i think the the beautiful thing about islam another beautiful thing about islam is that when you study the preservation of the quran when you study the preservation of the hadith when you go deep into studying the preservation of the authentic sayings of the prophet you come across a truly remarkable system that is a scientific system so that's the thing it doesn't depend upon faith right you could be a historian and just come from the point of view of you know objective historical perspective and you'd still be pretty sure that yep the quran is pretty much what muhammad said right those hadith are pretty reliable we can depend upon them as sources of information right um i don't think you can do that with the gospel not really you know not with the bible especially the new testament so it is really really problematic mm-hmm. yeah and the example that you mentioned of the you know the stoning of the adulterous woman you know let he, let the one who didn't sin cast the first stone as you mentioned uh, the oldest complete biblical manuscript is the codex sinaiticus which is found in the saint catherine's monastery in sinai it doesn't have it in it that that passage is not there right it's quite interesting because this guy uh constantine tischendorf spent his life searching for the oldest complete bi- bi- biblical manuscript you know i think in the 18th century 19th century he found it in in the sinai in saint catherine's monastery it didn't have it was missing in fact it was missing considerable numbers of verses and texts and even i think it had an extra epistle that wasn't in there so even it wasn't wasn't the same bible really as the ones that christians have today um so this is a whole dispute um again it doesn't really give you a lot of confidence does it to say oh this is really god's word mm-hmm. um whereas we do have that confidence when it comes to the quran yeah what what is islam what what's unique about islam from other man-made religions how would you uh, explain it to ben in 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 a minute like what stands out what is the most important thing in islam and what is this the most beautiful thing about islam the, the stand out point about islam is it's what it teaches about god what it teaches about god is so in tune with both your nature what you believe inside yourself and also your intellect and that is a beautiful thing that the way the quran talks about god it's like that makes sense it makes so much sense and that's what you will do you'll find god you really find who is god because that ultimately that's always is the purpose of life the purpose of life is to know to know god right so that's what you're going to find a very very beautiful concept that god is unique god is one god is not like anything in this universe and nothing in this universe is like god before that we- is the stand out point that pure monotheism that's that's really pure what monotheism. you can you can Absolutely. see where people attack islam uh, and many different things but when you sit with them you put things in context light bulb goes on say oh that makes sense i didn't think about it like that but you don't really see people t- attacking islam submission to the creator not the creation on the theology on the pure monotheism do you have you in all your years no oh, and and you see this is the thing this is very interesting when you look at someone like rich when you look at someone like dawkins right you look at his path of attacking religions when he attacks christianity he attacks it 
from a point of view of its theology. But he doesn't do that with Islam, right? With Islam, he'll talk about, and a lot, a lot of the time he'll talk about stuff that's not Islam anyway. Oh, suicide bombing, right? Well, you know, not that Islam allows it anyway, but you know, you understand the sort. He talks about these things, terrorism, you know, the way women are treated, like the normal, you know, your normal misconceptions, to be honest, right? So he can't really attack Islam from the point of view of its theology because its theology is so solid. It's really, really hard to argue against. Um, and this is something you find pretty consistently, right? Um, of course, the people who would attack Islam's theology are Christians, right? But they take, again, but they do that from the point of their belief system, right? Not that their theology makes any sense at all. It's just something that they presumed that, you know, like, so when it's with fellow Christian believers, they can presume the Trinity, they can presume that God is, you know, that Jesus is God incarnate, that he's the son of God and this and that, right? Oh, well, you though, those Muslims don't believe that. Well, yeah, alhamdulillah, thanks to God, we don't believe that. Because uh, that contradicts true monotheism, mm -hmm. but you know, from from the outside, no, you'll find it's very very hard to attack is uh, you know Islam's theology. Um, so when they do attack it, often it's it's not even from the point of view of things that Islam actually believes. You know, that's another interesting thing. You know, because often, especially when it comes from the point of view of a Christian. When Christians are attacking women's rights in Islam, well, did you read what the Bible said about women? Right? When they talk about punishments, have you read the punishments in the Bible? Right? When it talks about, you know, jihad, have you read about warfare and how the Bible talks about, you know, waging war? Right? Have you read these things? Because it's worse from a biblical perspective than it is from a Quranic perspective. So, like, if, if that's your criterion for saying Islam is not true, then your own religion is even more not true. That's the problem you're going to be faced with. Um, so, yeah, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, we, you know, we, it, listen, not everything Islam teaches is going to be what you like. And, of course, it's not, Right? Because Islam was not revealed to follow your desires. Islam was revealed, in fact, the opposite, for you to resist your desires, resist your impulses. So you, you may not like everything it says, right? I may not like the taste of a certain medicine, right? But I know it's the cure for my illness, right? You may not like getting up in the morning and stretching and taking exercise, right? And taking a cold shower, which is so good for you, right? But oh, that is that stuff is good for you. You know, it's gonna make, give you life and make you stronger. So this is something we know. Not everything you love is good for you, and not everything you hate is bad for you. You know, so to make it a criterion of judgment. Oh, I don't like this thing that the Quran says. Well, that's not a very good system of judging whether something's true or not. Mm -hmm. uh, going back, just wrapping up uh, in our in our last uh, closing. Going back to the pandemic that we're dealing with now, the coronavirus, um, you hear and you see lot, so many things, um, so many questions. Uh, you, you, you mentioned one about uh, uh, one number one thing is just staying optimistic. You quoted yeah. the hadith, you know, the, all the affairs of the believer are good. So, you know, we look for the good in things. But how can, how can a, a Muslim um, who's conscious of his creator and uh, the realities around us that you do you have satanic forces, right? Uh, you, you have deception. How do you keep a balance and how do you implement uh, the Quranic ayah where God Almighty is talking about verifying, checking things up, you know, if an uh, you know trustworthy person, a fossil comes to you. How do you yourself and what do you, what do you see as the best balance where you're not going to one extreme or the other, but at the same time, people who are giving you things, you know, this is a reality that's going on, but you know, like other things that are kind of slid under the carpet mm -hmm. now, like you said, you know, um, for instance, giving you examples, people who have uh, uh, spread lies and weapons of mass destruction, right? And they've gotten the whole world to come along, babies in incubators, you know that one? You remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah, that was uh, all a lie. Yeah. Do you know about the half a million that was spent on fake terrorist videos? Do you know about that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you know about uh, the whole thing with uh, the world being uh, confused or some blinded to the fact of what's going on in, uh, in the open air prison, right? Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you got lie after lie after lie after lie. But... I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, but the media seems like it's magic. It works magic on people, the mainstream media. So how do you uh, balance it out? Where, where can you go to verify, to check, so you're, you're not being, as they say, hoodwinked? No, honestly, you know, honestly, the thing is, bro, is that you have to realize that people who are not, like, people who are not clearly guided by Allah's guidance. After guidance, there is nothing except going astray. You know, you have to realize that right outside of guidance there's nothing except going astray and it doesn't even look people don't even have to be malicious they don't even have to be nasty like people you can know this from your own life any convert can tell you it's not it's not that you don't love your parents you love your parents but if your parents are not muslim right your parents are not going to be guiding you by the wisdom of the Quran and the Sunnah. They're gonna be guiding you by what they think is important in life. So my mom is always asking, oh, I hope they're paying you for giving these talks, right? I hope that, and it's like, well, it's not about being paid, mom. You know, this is something you do for Allah, right? You know, like, but what's the point in me telling her that stuff? I just say, yeah, yeah, you know, don't worry, they're paying you, right? <laughs> you know, like, even though sometimes they don't even, pay my ticket, you know, but I mean, no, but alhamdulillah, sometimes people do, right? They give you something, they help you, right? But the point is, is that, do you understand what I'm trying to say, Eddie, yes. is that like your mom loves you, she cares about you, but she's not guiding you with Allah's guidance, right? I remember one sheikh, now this is to give you a, this is to give you a, a counter example, and I, don't worry, I'm coming to what you, may you'll see where I'm coming from in a mm -hmm. second. Right? Yeah. Um, I'll give you a counter example, right? A sheikh, uh, there's one sheikh, very nice sheikh. His mother used to advise him, oh, my son, I'm not worried for you about this and that. You know what I'm worried for you when you go and you give your talks and lectures? I'm worried you, about you showing off. I'm worried that you will do things not sincerely for the sake of Allah. And that all of this effort and all of this time you put into it, it will ruin you because you didn't do it with ikhlas. Oh, my son, have ikhlas. You see the difference between this mother advising her son, right? And, you know, the non-Muslim mother advising her son. And so it's the same with our governments, right? I don't think that most governments want bad for their people, right? I don't think that. I actually genuinely think most governments do want good for their people, right? But how do they define what's good for their people, right? So in America, you know, they believe in capitalism. That's what they believe in. They believe that's the system. They believe that ultimately capitalism is what they think is going to bring about a good society because they think it's going to make people wealthier. And they think that that's what's important in life, that money is, you know, the economy is more important than people's lives because there's a reason for that, because they think that money is what makes you happy in the end. It's what's going to make you successful. But that's all a lie, right? I'm not saying they're lying on purpose. It's just they believe in a lie. It's not true that money makes you happy. Right. And we know that as a spiritual truth. So the thing is, we have to understand that is that even if our governments are not malicious and vicious, right, even if they want good for us, the good they want for us is not correct, according to Allah's guidance. Let alone we add to that that people are also misguided by shaitan. Let alone we add to that that, no, there are some people who are really genuinely evil. And unfortunately, some people maybe they don't even care they don't even care they're just in it for themselves they don't care about people they don't care about society or maybe even worse on a crazy extreme is that some people are actually say this and they just like seeing people suffer there are people who are genuinely like that and we've seen in history there are rulers and there are tyrants and you know who genuinely seem to enjoy making their people suffer so you have that whole spectrum it would be silly of us and naive of us, right, not to be aware of that. But at the end of the day, what can we do, right? At the end of the day, what can we do is we can be good Muslims. We can say our prayers. We can fast. We can do whatever we can to enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong, right? Um, so we have to realize that, look, our options are limited, there is not much point you spending too much time 
with conspiracy theories that may or may not be true. Maybe some of those conspiracy theories are actually true, but what are you going to do about it? Practically, what you can do about it actually is read the Quran, say your prayers, make dhikr of Allah, invite people to Islam, invite people to la ilaha illallah, and put your trust in Allah, right? Because the Quraysh, they plotted and they planned and they planned and planned, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what did the Prophet do? He invited them to la ilaha illallah. And you know when the time was, they came to try and kill him, Allah told him and Allah saved him and Allah rescued him, right? And Allah took Abu Bakr and the Prophet and they were in the famous incident when they were in the cave, hiding. The Prophet, the messenger of God, the messenger of God was hiding in a cave. He had to run away and hide. Well, that's what he had to do, right? When the time came. Mm -hmm. But Allah protected him. So what? that's what can you do? You can do only what's in front of your face, Mm -hmm. right? And don't worry too much and don't stress too much about other stuff because it's just with Allah, right? All you can do is the best with what you've got and what comes to you and that's it. I, you know, I, don't stress out too much. That's the thing. I, Trust in Allah. Hasban Allah wa ni'ma wa You know, uh, Allah, you know, we rely upon him and he's the best of guardians. Yeah. I like what you said. So we have the, they plot and plan Allah plans Allah is the best of planners you have the Qadr exactly. so things that are out of your control because you hear a lot of things uh, said out there but uh, is it synthetic is it man-made is it this uh, are they you know globalists you hear all sorts of things yeah. being thrown out there but that's out of your control but the things that are in your control uh, people talk about pharmaceutical company all these you've heard a lot of the things that are out there yeah, right? yeah. Now you say some things might be true, might not, whatever, it's out of our control. But uh, one thing in our control is our connection with our creator, strengthening that because, you know, we're going to die tomorrow or the next day. It can happen. So be ready for that. But another thing that really comes to mind is taking care because you also hear that, again, if it's meant to happen, it's meant to be. But uh, we dig the trench, we tie the camel, our health. You know, we hear a lot of people getting sick because of the the immune system being compromised, genetically modified yep. foods and the environment and uh, uh, bad oh. food, bad water and all these things. I mean, we see a lot lot of people who don't take their health serious. I mean, you're someone who bike rides, you work out, you uh, you, you eat good. How important is that in, in our deen? You know, really taking the amana that Allah SWT has given our body and not just putting, as the saying says, you know, Allah didn't create this body as a garbage can. Don't put garbage in it. Absolutely. And I agree with that, bro. And you do your best. Like, you know, I look, there's lots of things that I am, I'll be honest, there's there's stuff that I am extremely concerned about. I'm concerned about a world where pharmaceutical companies can manufacture diseases for which they are the only ones who have manufactured a cure, Mm -hmm. right? It is absolutely crazy. And perhaps this is a reason why there should not be any private pharmaceutical companies, they shouldn't exist. They should all be controlled like by government. So there is a minimum, you know, money making agenda there. There's something very uncomfortable about that, right? Um, you know, the, the whole idea that, um, you know, you could be given a vaccine and, and the, 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 you know, the vaccine itself may cause worse diseases than the one that it's trying to prevent. It's not that I don't believe in the effectiveness of vac- vaccines. As a scientific principle, I believe in it. But the problem is... What, you, you mentioned, I, I'm sorry, I, someone, sent, someone sent yeah. me, someone sent this. I, this I, it just, what, since you said vaccines, I don't know what you, what you think about yeah. this. Do you see this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> look, at the end of the day, if they make us take a vaccine and they force us, what can we do? Yeah. Right. Um, And it's not that I wouldn't get vaccinated, but it's like I have a right, I would think, to research and think carefully about what is being put into my body and why, right? Do I trust everything? Um, I mean, I avoid medication as much as possible. To be generally, I avoid it, right? But on the other hand, you began with, you know, for every disease, there is a cure. So, you know, there is this trust factor, um, there are serious questions to be asked, you know, mm-hmm. um, and we know historically there have been medications that have caused real, real problems, right? Um, so we know that historically, 
Um, so yeah, look, these things concern me. So and and looking after your health is very very important in Islam. You know, it's one of the things the Prophet said: the two feet of son, of the son of Adam will not move from their place in front of their Lord until they are asked about five things. So your life and what you did with it, your health and how you cared for it, your money, you know how you spent it and how you how you earned it and how you spent it. So there's two things: how you earned your money and how you spent it. And your knowledge and how you acted on it. So, like this, that's a whole lecture we could give on that that hadith alone. But one of the things the Prophet mentioned is your health, right? How did you care for your health? So, you know, keeping healthy, you know, a modicum of good physical exercise is the sunnah. The Prophet had a very very healthy life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, mostly making sure you eat good halal. It's not just about food being halal. It's about food being tayyib. Tayyib. Well. Yes. 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 Uh, so like, you know, I try to eat as much stuff that I can that is organic as possible, home cooked food as much as possible, right? Um, you know, try to avoid too much refined stuff. You know, there's just basic things really, like it's not, it's not really rocket science being healthy, right? <laughs> we usually have a slogan, eat real but food, the avoid real fake food. With the, I, have a, I have quite a, you know, I'm not entirely uh, happy with the whole philosophy of Western medicine, right? Because when you start studying about how most medication works, it actually works by poisoning your body. It works by disrupting the systems in your body. And how does it disrupt the systems in your body? By poisoning your body, right? Like through levels of toxic toxicity. So I was watching, what's his name? Trevor... You know, this comedian guy, he does that, you know, the, the, he makes fun of the news. I can't remember his name, Trevor something, right? But he's a black guy from South Africa originally, right? He's yes. from, your, from the States. So he was interviewing some top guy from the White House. And he was admitting that, oh, like vaccines have a level of toxicity in it, right? We have to be careful about that. So, like, but this is the case with all medication. Any medication you take, right, is all about poisoning your body, right? It's just that the poison is supposed to be helping some symptoms because that's what it does. It it disrupts the chemical, you know, the chemical pathways in your body to try and, you know, alleviate the symptoms of particular diseases, right? Mm-hmm. So I think we have to be very, very careful about what stuff we take anyway, right? You look at chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is literally killing you. It's literally killing yourself. It's a horrific thing. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I don't claim to have any great medical knowledge. Uh, and it's not that I would not ever take medicine. I do take medicine. Right. I mean, I, for example, I suffer occasionally from like really bad migraines. And I found that ibuprofen, you know, the I, ibuprofen um, has been a lifesaver for me. Right. It's helped me so much. You know, alhamdulillah, when I take it, I say alhamdulillah for this drug, <laughs> it's like really helps me. Um, but, you know, like I would be careful not to take it unless I really, really have to. Mm-hmm. Because I just fundamentally think that you don't put this stuff in your body unless you really, really need to do it. Yeah. You over, know? O- over time, you, you'll have other uh, other problems that will arise. The lining in the stomach, you'll end up having, yep. uh, you know, has, other yep. issues that will come up. It has, ulcers, it has uh, problems with yeah. it. It does. So... You know, you have to be careful, right? Yeah. You know, just uh, we have a saying, it's uh, powerful. It says, eat real food, avoid fake food, you know, because in the food, Hippocrates uh, had a statement. He said, let food be your medicine, medicine be your food. So yep. uh, nowadays, with all of the food being modified and refined, a lot of those nutritional qualities that are in the foods that are meant to heal the body, repair the body, a lot of times we're deplete yep. of that. And that, that's really the essence where you see how, how the food that Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, can have such a healing, empowering effect. But many of us are eating fake food. And this is why our, 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 our immune system... I think we're eating too much. The, the thing the prophet, much, says, yeah, prophet too much. Us is that actually most diseases come from the stomach. Yeah. It's from eating too much. That's another right? problem, yeah. Yeah. So really, in reality, the, you know, and I can't say I practice this myself very well, but right, we should really just be eating enough to keep us alive. That's yeah. the amount of food we should be taking in. And then when we do eat, that food should be quality stuff. Yeah. If, we, if we, 
really if we live like that we would suffer very very few diseases yeah. i think very you, few you know what happens is why people because there's these uh, addictive elements in the food the msg and other things yep. the sugar so now you're not getting the nutritional benefits and you just keep right. your body's not uh, satisfied because it's not nourished yep. and you just keep eating more and more but when you eat the right. about absolutely this, believe this yeah, yeah. so was, i believe uh, totally bro I, I believe that's exactly what happens your body is quite simple in the sense that it's just like if it doesn't have the nutrients it needs, it sends that signal, you yeah. know, and the signal is, I'm hungry. Eat. Yes, yes. If you're eating the same stuff that is actually draining, like so these refined foods actually drain your body of nutrients. It, it takes up vital nutrients in order to digest it. Absolutely. So yes. you become more depraved, then you feel more hungry, you feel that more hunger, and you're never satiated. The more you eat, the worse it gets, right? And you eat more and more and more. And like, so that's the difference when you eat really good, healthy stuff, mm -hmm. right? That satisfies you because it has those nutrients in it. That in part is what helps you deal with the hunger because your body is not sending out those signals. It's like, yeah, I'm, I've got what I need now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, cold, we'll wrap up, uh, but I, uh, uh, you mentioned cold showers. Uh, you've, have yeah. you, have you, have you heard, cause it's about life hacks. You find these different things yeah. that you put yeah. yourself in. I mean, it's very interesting. I'm really into, um, I, I'm, I'm looking into Wim Hof at the moment and his whole method. I've actually started his uh, online course. Yeah, um, It's really interesting because a lot of the stuff that he's, you know, talking about, I've been doing, I realize I've been doing some of that stuff since I was a kid, just myself. Yeah. I don't even know why I was doing it, right? Um, so, but yeah, taking cold showers, um, breathing, learning to breathe properly. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It's just something... We just, I, again, I, I started doing that because I started getting into Buddhism and yoga and stuff when I was, before I was Muslim, right? So I learned a lot about breathing. But simple things about breathing correctly, cold showers, so good for you, invigorating your body. Even better if you can have a sauna and cold showers, yes, yes, like yeah. not everyone can have a sauna, <laughs> right? But, you know, um, that sort of stuff, I've always loved that stuff, right? I mean, just today, Ed, uh, you know, I told you because you were trying to make this call with me. I said, I'm going to go with the kids for, uh, I took the kids, we went out for a two hour walk. So just up in the hills where I live, there's a reservoir, right? And you can imagine, I think it's about, you know, seven or eight degrees. So this reservoir is probably just freezing, just above, you know, zero, maybe one or two degrees. So I just went for a swim in that today. That was like so invigorating. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I really re recommend that stuff. That is just gives so much energy. You know, it gives you so much energy. You have a cold shower in the morning, boom. You know, you're really set up for the day. You know, well, yeah, um, it really invigorates and gets the blood flowing. And yeah, so I'm, I definitely, I'm into these things. Alhamdulillah. That's really, really nice to see. Hiking, martial arts. You know, the, I know you're a big guy in the, um, you know, Brazilian jiu jitsu. Uh, circles, right? So, you know, anything like that, very, very good stuff. Oh, that's nice. I've been, I've been doing this. She uh, so had the Win Hof. I've been for a few years now. Thirty yeah. three sets. <sighs> Inhale, let it go. Yeah, yeah. Hold that's it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> then the the uh, the cold showers. Really, really. Yeah. It's and it, it's an interesting. Like you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation yes. for benefits. Yes, yes. I, I relate that back into the dean. Sometimes something might be yeah. uncomfortable, but it's for Absolutely. your it's for your better. Absolutely, yeah. bro. It's a very Islamic principle, yeah. right? Um, and, and to be believe me, as I was walking up there, I knew that was going to be cold. And like my whole, you know, I was saying, you know, there's no way you go, I'm cold walking up there, let alone getting in the water, you know? But I said to, I said to myself, you know, I like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. If I'm not feeling, if I'm feeling uncomfortable about it, it's like good, right? Because you need to move out of that comfort zone, stop feeling comfortable with yourself, and put yourself in something that is, you know, a little bit uncomfortable, and it's good for you, right? Yeah. And I think Islam, it's, it's a, uh, you know, you're, you're right. You take it back to Islam. Not everything you like, you know, not everything that you hate it, it's bad for you. You know, some things you don't like them, but they're good for you. And we do them because they're good for us and they transform us and they build us and they make us better and stronger people, whether it's spiritually, mentally or physically, mm. you know. So th that's it. Let's look at this coronavirus situation, this lockdown. Let's look at it like that. Yeah, for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable. But, you know, we can get so many benefits from it, inshallah. Look for the benefits, you know, and alhamdulillah. 
Allah will bless all of us, inshallah. And inshallah, we can. Uh, we had some plans to meet up in Bosnia. Uh, it didn't go through, but inshallah, we get through this. Our, our next meeting can be hopefully, inshallah, God willing, in, in Bosnia. That, I'd love to do that. I, I'm. I'm. We should plan it, inshallah. We yeah. plan it properly. So I, 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 hopefully, I will. Maybe I will do a sort of trip through Europe and, you know, end up there, inshallah, and come back. It'll be nice. It'll be beautiful, inshallah. Yeah. It was nice. We covered a lot of good things, a lot of good points. Inshallah, they could be of uh, benefit. Really nice. May Allah, the Creator of the heavens and earth, keep you and your family. And, I mean, and everyone safe. I mean, Eddie, and yours as well, my dear brother, and yours as well. Thank you very much for your time. Shazakallah, Eddie. It's great to talk to you, my brother. You take care, inshallah. All right. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.